Britain. Michael Moore is suggesting in his movie is that, that you can get a free lunch, that socialized health care in European countries is without flaw and without criticism. That simply isn't true. Michael Moore is, is a pathetic propagandist. He's not even uh, any good at it. Really but, but, but putting that aside here. Well, I knew they couldn't handle it. France does seem a bit too good to be true. What you don't know is that when I was making this movie, I went somewhere else. I visited a place that blows France right out of the water. A place so scary, I couldn't put it in this film. It's a place where the standard of living is one of the highest in the world. France and England only give you six months paid maternity leave. This place gives you a full year. This country will buy you a new car if you're having trouble using public transportation. And the country's health insurance will pay for a two-week tropical vacation to help you with your ailments through the long winters. Is this some distant, faraway planet? No, it's Norway. Norway is first on the United Nations Human Development List, meaning that they're ranked number one for things like literacy, education, health care, and per capita income. They rank number two in the world for having women in government, with Sweden at number one. By the way, the United States ranks number 66. Det viktigaste är er att alla i Norge, uansett om du är er rik eller fattig, uansett om du är er kvinna eller man och uansett var du bor i landet. We don't want to have death penalty as part of Norwegian legislation. There is no life sentence. We haven't an, in principle no armed police uh, either. Most policemen uh, walking in the streets will not be uh, carrying a gun. Whoa, wait. Is that a poodle? What we call a conservative in, in Norway, I suppose you would, uh, most people in the United States would call liberal. And they're ahead of the rest of the world when it comes to renewable energy. They discovered a way to tap into the warm glow from raw sewage in order to heat their homes. The biggest sewage day is uh, in the weekend. Uh, people is out partying and they go into the toilet, drink a lot of beer, again go to the toilet and we get a lot of sewage in our system. That's right. The Norwegians only drink because they want to save the planet. In fact, they love the earth so much, they wouldn't dream of letting a private company own all their oil reserves. To manage the revenues from the oil on behalf of the people of Norway, the country hired a philosopher. I remember asking them when I came there for the first time, that, are you sure you're talking to the right person? I don't even know the difference between stocks and bonds, which is not quite true. I, I do, but I just wanted to point out to them. Uh, and their answer was, uh, well, but we have the best people in the world who know the difference between stocks and bonds. We have all the competence we need there. But the question is, can we ask the right questions when it comes to these very difficult ethical issues about how we preserve value in the long term? Uh, where the idea is that we don't spend this money now. We can spend the surplus, but the capital itself should be kept for future generations. Because basically this has been built up over two to three hundred million years, and we shouldn't spend it in fifty years. <laughs> we should make sure that this is something that produces a surplus for future generations. If you really care about the fifty to hundred year horizon, questions about climate change, for instance, about pollution, about violent conflict, all of these things, about the treatment of children, all of these things actually become crucial in a financial sense. This is something I see cutting across the political spectrum that all emphasize this need to pull together to take care of those that are weakest uh, and at the same time preserving a toleration and respect for difference. All of Norway seems to be beautiful, peaceful and civilized. But one place within Norway outshines it all. A place reachable only by boat. An island that's a model of sustainable ecology.
a destination for families on the weekend. A popular spot for locals to experience a close-knit community of murderers, rapists, and child molesters. Okay, this, uh, this is uh, Håvald and um, Ronny, uh, the two, two guys that's living here. Um, they w will talk with you, um, tell you about uh, how it is to, to stay here. Meet Horvald Shervin, an official for UNICEF, who had a better idea of where the children's money should be spent. And Ronnie Meerstadt. His looks could kill, but his hands did instead. And those guys can walk around with you afterwards. Okay. Maybe we can have a cup of coffee or something. Perfect. Every activity we have on the island should be uh, an activity that will bring you to, uh, to learn responsibility. Uh, if I pick up the potatoes every autumn, and we, we try to get every prisoners and every staff member to do it together. If we do that together, we are uh, doing something that shows the prisoners that we are equal human beings. Every guy you will see out here are, are prisoners. Uh, those who are working here will, will wear a uniform. They live four, five, six people together. Um, they have to, uh, to wake themselves up in the morning, make their own breakfast and go to work, just like you and me. Tiva? No. It, uh, it tells me it's 20 degrees in the water, I think it's 15. They told you, you know they're prisoners. I'm walking outside with ordinary people. I go down and take the ferry out of the island and go to the shore and travel to work. I'm only here in the weekends and, uh, and the nights, so that's good. I tried to get the job on this ferry right away. We got a good opportunity to smuggle and uh, run away and so. <laughs> you ever think about doing that? No. Nah. I feel I have managed to calm down. Because I used to work 20 hours a day, I used to travel 300 uh, days a year. Um, I'm sure I'll live 10 years longer because I'm here. Yeah, it looks like paradise, but when you're staying here, it's everything sounds so easy, and you can go out and you can do this and do this, but <coughs> you always know that it's a prison. We had a prisoner here. He was uh, convicted for murder. He uh, cut two people up with a uh, chainsaw, and uh, uh, most people will think uh, that uh, this kind of person cannot be in this kind of prison, he had to be locked up. But he came to this prison on the last uh, time of his sentence and he served here for four years and he worked in the forest with a chainsaw. You have dinner parties? I have had a tie and a jacket on a couple of times, but that's on special occasion. Maybe the way to rehabilitate prisoners is to send them to dinner parties or have them work on their tan. If you treat people properly, uh, they may change behavior and be good, ordinary citizens. Yes, these people are crazy.